This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. We are at Agnes of Glass Studios and Gallery. Since 1999, this studio has been providing one-of-a-kind hand-blowing art glass, architectural elements, and custom design. I am here with the artist and owner. Thank you so much for joining us, Agnes. Let's, let's begin, first of all, 1999, you decided to open up your shop here, but quite honestly, it was many, many years before that, all the way back to 1985, your love and passion of art, uh, be it in painting, developed and started. What got you involved in this line and this type of industry? You know, I saw this uh, beautiful uh, molten glass up in Breckenridge, Colorado, and uh, that was the first time I was introduced to it, and I just fell in love with it. And, um, yeah. And it began, and so it began. It began. Yes, right. You probably didn't expect you're going to go into this in, in this particular direction. Uh, no, not at the time. I didn't. I knew that I loved it, and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to feel more of it. Wonderful. Some of the techniques that you're able to utilize, quite honestly, they go back all the way back to the 16th century. We're talking about Italian history. Um, was glass blowing popular back then? And why do you think it still is a popular means today? It's a very unique, sophisticated art. And um, the Egyptians uh, were probably playing with it, with all that sand. And, and it originated all the way to American artists today. And, it's just a beautiful art. Wonderful. I mean, quite honestly, you have influences from Italian glass blowing to uh, 19th century Roman glass blowing. Even individual artists that you've worked with throughout the years are these really what influence you and kind of mold what comes out of the studio? Definitely. Um, 16th century uh, Italian glass, um, all the way down to Roman glass. It's 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 just. Uh, it's just beautiful. I mean, the way we do it uh, in my live studio in the back is definitely old school. Old school it is. Share with us briefly for the viewers out there that may not understand what the process it is, um, how this happens. I mean, quite honestly, you're taking the elements of earth here. We're talking about fire, sand, water, air. They really have to come together in a quite beautiful way. Definitely, definitely. We're using five elements of the earth here and um, definitely sand. We take it uh, sand and, and salic and lime soda and we make, uh, we cook it. We cook it for about 24 hours and it becomes a molten, it becomes alive. Wow, interesting. Um, some of the um, ovens back there I see, um, what degree are we talking about of heat or coming out of there? Right now, uh, we're standing at uh, uh, 2,035 degrees. Interesting. Let me, let me ask you, working in the past with other artists, do you enjoy collaborating with other artists and creating product lines? For sure. I've worked in production uh, teams and, um, in the past and it's really helped me develop uh, my own uh, techniques and my own um, skill. Interesting. Obviously, Agnes, your family never told you don't play with fire because right. that is exactly what you're now teaching others to do. That's correct. Even firemen. <laughs> They definitely come in here and they put out fires and we teach them how to play with the fire a little bit and make a beautiful piece of glass. That is so interesting. Some of the workshops that you're able to provide out there, obviously safety and health are utmost importance. Is that why pretty much you're talking about an adult environment back there? Yeah, I mean, we have taught um, young, uh, young adults in the past, and, um, but we do. We want adults back there and let them come out and play with the fire a little bit. And um, health and safety is probably the biggest thing I'll always preach, uh, you know. Absolutely. Uh, let me ask you this. Some of the workshops you're able to provide for folks, um, are we talking about advanced workshops? Are we talking about intermediate or even beginners or a little bit of each? A little bit of each. Actually, uh, my beginner uh, workshops are very uh, successful here. We bring novelist people in that have never, ever played with fire, and I teach them how to uh, create either from an ornament all the way to a, a, a small platter. Interesting. I mean, that's got to be a, a great activity for a family. I think that'd be kind of fun. Not only that, but maybe even a corporate family to do some great team building. Is that something you provide? We do. We, we do um, families, uh, team building events. Um, we bring friends, family, whoever wants to come in and play with the fire. I definitely open my doors up and um, give them a chance to uh, play. 
to play with the fire and that's that's the kind of a cool thing it also seems kind of like a kind of a romantic date for two people to do I mean it's got to be kind of fun especially and the holidays coming up I imagine it's a great way to produce something that can be hung on a tree for the for the holiday season yes actually our ornament classes are very popular um, this time of year uh, we get families uh, wanting to come and make each other an ornament because they don't know what to give each other anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You, you yourself have been able to, uh, been privileged to really study not only here in, uh, in the nation but also Europe uh, and abroad. You put on some great exhibits there. Is your way kind of, of giving back in teaching others some of the knowledge you've learned? For sure. I, I love giving back. Um, you know, I don't know any great artist that has never been a teacher somewhere in their life, and I just love it to see people come in, and, and everybody's creative in their own way, and, and I learn from my students. Absolutely. One of the unique things that really caught my eye when we decided to come out and interview you was the fact that um, one of the ways to share your art is in memorials, a way to really honor somebody who's passed on. Share with me how that works and what happens there. Um, it was an idea that my father had, and um, he said to me, um, have you ever um, mixed the color with the ashes? And I thought about it for a few days, and I said, oh, hmm, you know, my, my dog had passed away, so uh, I decided to put my, my dog in glass, and it really worked, and ever since that, it's been successful for me. So that, uh, that idea actually originated with you and your family. Yes, yes. That's an amazing idea. I'd love to see that go forward. I mean, quite honestly, I looked at that and I said, that is so cool because honestly, the glass is a one of a kind. Mm -hmm. It has kind of a mystical feel to it. It's also got a, 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 real, a real uniqueness to it, obviously representing the person that may have passed away or like you said, even a pet. Yes, definitely. Um, next year, we're going to be offering the family to come in and make um, uh, memorials to be to participate with it it's a very touching thing and and to see them pick the colors and um, it's just a beautiful thing and quite a bonding experience for a family I think that's great mm -hmm. folks take a look at the bottom of the screen right there what you're gonna see is her website on the website you're gonna get an idea a little bit more about the artist um, quite honestly has always had a passion for art uh, what began as a painting acrylics then like you say uh, she was introduced to this fine art and she just couldn't turn it down decided it was something she had to do and you'll also see a, a great gallery there of a lot of her work that's available and um, let me ask you it started with painting um, do you still offer works of paint um, for folks out there as well I do I do I some of the painting that are hanging on the wall uh, today are some of my pieces. Um, I maybe will get lucky to do one a year of uh, either oil on canvas or acrylics. So. Excellent. Let me ask you, how many years does it take for, I mean, I see some pieces, we're talking about everything from shot glasses to ornaments to some platters and even a little more elaborate, we're talking about chandeliers, lighting. How many years does it take somebody with that kind of experience to put together a chandelier? Um, it's taken me about 20 years to master it, um, and I can't even say that I've, I'll ever master glass. It's, you know, I always tell all my students, um, you'll never master glass, just enjoy the process. You'll never master glass, just enjoy the process. Keep in mind, you can actually come out and play with fire. That is Agnes of Glass Studio and Galleries located here in Denver, Colorado. Since 1999, have been producing one-of-a-kind, hand-blown, art for you and your family in Denver. This is Gary Atensu with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.
This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're on location with Major Mom, basically doing what they do best. I am here with the co-founders, the CEO, Angela and Mandy. Let me ask you, Angela, serving your country for over 18 years, you basically were able to hone your disciplines and your passion, something, a gift you were probably born with, and that is uncluttering people's lives, organizing lives, creating systems for them. It was basically in December of 03 when the official title Major Mom came about. Tell me how that got going. Well, I decided to uh, walk away from a very long military career. I um, had my first child when I was a major, hence my nickname, Major Mom. Mm -hmm. And when I had my second child, I decided that military life and motherhood are completely incompatible. And I walked away from that and became a stay-at-home mom. And after about a year and a half, we had some situation come up where I needed to go back to work. So I decided to start Major Mom because I was born to organize. And I thought I could share my gift with the world and really create some peace and serenity in other homes. Wonderful. And now you basically, what, so the idea came about to get a team out there that had the same passion you did and the same skills that you had. And so Major Mom was born. Absolutely. I started working at, as a solo practitioner and just organizing homes by myself and I soon realized these are huge jobs there's a lot to do and I'm not being as efficient and effective for the clients so I decided to raise up an army of organizers to get out there and serve more people more efficiently more efficiently excellent let me ask you our lives it's go 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 we're always pushing all the time why do you feel the need is more important today than basically back when you guys started um, well one of the things that we've seen recently is that I guess in the past few years is people have just accumulated and accumulated and, and the things in their home have grown to such an extent that they get to this point of paralysis and they don't know what to do, they don't know what's the first step, how do we change and so that's where we come in. Wonderful. I would imagine, folks, at the top of your do list, organizations up there, we understand the importance. Honestly, this time of year, the resolutions are out there. You want to get organized. Yes. But honestly, we put it off. So what is the cost? What is the cost by putting this, this task off? I think the biggest cost, there's four major costs to not getting organized, or major impacts, we call them. Okay. Your time, you have a lot of wasted time when you're not organized, looking for things that you can't find. Sure. You waste your money because you go out and buy duplicate purchases or you buy things you don't need and gadgets because you're not organized. Right. Your health is affected because sometimes the environment is so cluttered there could be little critters living in places that you, you don't, oh, you know, you don't consider totally. and then your safety is impacted because currently accidents in the home have increased 765 percent because people are tripping over all the cords and the clutter. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah. Let me ask you, I mean, you guys have quite a few packages out there that you can pretty much, some, somebody has a need out there, you can take care of it. Let's start off, first of all, Mandy, with residential. What kind of rooms are we talking about that you guys get in there and tackle? Okay, so we love organizing resident, residences of all types. Um, we organize small apartments, we organize multi-million dollar homes and everything in between, uh, but we organize all rooms for um, we're not afraid to get dirty, so we'll go down into those basements that have not seen sunlight in a long time. Uh, we'll organize garages. We do all the small spaces from bathrooms to closets, laundry areas. Um, wherever there's clutter, that's where we come in. We do every room in the house. It's yeah. so much fun. Wonderful. And let me ask you, what, for the viewers out there, is the best place to start possibly right away? In other words, when you first move into a home, and how do you guys help with that move? Oh, we love doing unpack jobs. We love unpacking a home, getting everything put away, all the furniture in the best space for that family's lifestyle and their speed of life. We love doing that. So much easier to start off on the right foot. But either way, we love getting them in the right direction. So starting off on the first step is, is very easy. Let's think about it, though, though. Cleaning your home, organizing your home, it's an ongoing process because your lives change. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about we start out with a, a young couple, and then before you know it, a new baby comes along. How are you guys able to help with a new baby? That's that's a new strategy. Yeah, we help with all fa all sorts of family transitions, all sorts of life transitions. So whether it's a new baby, whether it's merging households mm -hmm. um, upon a marriage, or um, when families divorce, uh, we help in um, whether it's a new job, uh, any sort of life transition that's causing things to build up around the household. 
Interesting. And so obviously, like you said, merging households. I mean, it really does take the whole team, everybody pointing in the right direction to make sure that what you put in place is implemented. And so let me ask you, what do you do in the way of family management? Well, I'm a certified family manager, and some of our other liberators on the team are getting their certification as well. So we actually empower the mom to empower her children and husband right. to um, participate in the organizing and maintaining the home on a daily basis. And we teach them some great techniques. It is amazing once you have an organized home and have some um, boundaries in place, it only takes 15 minutes to really straighten up each evening. Did you hear that man out there? Yeah, <laughs> boundaries in place. Um, okay, excellent. I mean, obviously throughout your life, your needs are changing, your wants are changing, and then we hit our golden years, or should we say our wiser years, mm -hmm. and a lot of people out there start what? Downsizing. Yes. They start deciding, you know what, I've been carrying around this clutter for such a long time, and it's basically taking up a lot of energy, a lot of resources. Is that what you're finding in downsizing? We do a lot of downsizing. One of the things that we help it with in particular is when people try to um, go from say 2,500 square feet to 1,100 square feet mm -hmm. and they need help making those decisions. What sort of furniture is going to fit in there? What sort of items are truly valuable and I truly treasure? Because mm -hmm. not everything is going to fit. Sure. Um, and so we help with some of those challenging decisions and can come up with a plan before everything gets moved over. Right. And you hit that point of overwhelm. So it makes the transition a lot smoother. Wonderful. And folks, their website is the bottom of the screen right there as well. So keep in mind, as far as a residential area, there's no job too small or too large. These ladies can't come in. Ladies, men, and their entire team can come in and work it through. But you also offer some commercial services as well. Somebody out there has an office. I mean, that's where we live day in and day out. So Absolutely. tell me what you have there. Well, we have a few people on the team that are well-versed in organizing for corporate offices and that is for 10 employees or less so we don't do large corporations okay. we can do storage rooms in their their um, business places we've done a lot of spas and hair places places that need a lot to have uh, the Zen they need that Zen feeling and when it's cluttered clients don't like to be in, in those spaces so sure. we have a lot of spa and hair uh, hair salon clients Wonderful. that we go in and really get each station and each area nice and decluttered and feeling good and even resign we do a lot of redesigns Wonderful. in homes and those offices and then guess what happens the business owner starts making more money and more clients come in because they're proud of their space they really really want more people coming through those doors cleanliness is next to godliness that's right <laughs> excellent let me ask you first of all um, you've got a team now when you guys first came up with the idea and put it together you soon realized quickly I need a team of people that are passionate about it like I am how many teams do you have out there how many folks do you have out there and why do you call them liberators we have 13 liberators now. It's taken Mandy and I three years to build our team to that size. We have a very high filter and barrier to come into our company. The person who comes to our company has to be born to organize and very passionate about it. And we call them liberators because we actually liberate people from the burdens of their stuff. Wow. You would not believe how many people are depressed. They're so overwhelmed. And when we come in and just declutter, set up systems and organize, they literally feel liberated from those burdens and so happy and energized. Wonderful. Folks, you've got to keep in mind here, just like anything, when you bring in a professional, what you're looking at is somebody who has created a system, created a system for doing something correctly. And basically, you can come in, try to do this thing yourself, and for the next two, three years, struggle with it and try to put something right, together, right? right? Exactly. I mean, or you bring in the professionals because there's a rhyme and a reason of how they do it. Let's talk about the major mom method. Great. Well, Mandy and I developed the major mom method and every organizer, professional organizer knows that there's an organized approach to organizing sure. and we call ours the major mom method. It's a three-phased approach to organizing. We get a good picture of what the client wants for their space and note what the client wants. Sure. This isn't like the TV shows where they go in and tell right. you what to do. We ask the client, what do you want? Wonderful. Then we come up with a great space plan and action plan based off of their desires and vision for those each room of the house. Wonderful. And phase three is we actually sort everything like with like. We determine what the treasures are with the client. They say keep, donate, sell. We establish a home for each thing. Then we put it away in the proper container 
and then we help them start new habits. Wonderful. And what you end up with, folks, at the end of that is uh, mission accomplished. Absolutely. <laughs> and you guys have basically come in and make sure these folks are happy with um, basically taking something, all the important things, getting rid of the stuff that's not so important. When the mission is accomplished, obviously that's where you feel you've become a blessing for somebody. You basically have um, changed their lives in a certain way that they live with day in and day out. Share with me a story or two, if you would. Mm. Um, I have a, a client story recently, and she said she has struggled with disorganization her entire life. And part of it is this emotional burden that she's carried around. Her father um, was a drill sergeant, and he was always very adamant that everything was in its place, everything was always put away. And so when she then moved out on her own, she had kind of that rebellion, <laughs> and so things just kind of did whatever, wherever she wanted to go. Um, but then it became overwhelming and it became cluttered and she was never taught how to organize she was just told go clean your room and she said you know she was writing the check at the end of our job and she said i tell everybody this is the best money i have ever spent because i have always struggled with disorganization and i've never had help wow. and you guys came in and you were non-judgmental i felt respected the whole time and I just feel like this is such a huge blessing. Huge blessing. If you can give me peace in my life and my home, that's huge. Yes. I mean, absolutely. And so let me ask you, Angela, what do you think a viewer out there, what do you think the biggest fear is? Why are they afraid to bring in a professional? What would you think? I think that um, there's several fears, but the big one is, is the fear of judgment, the fear of us thinking they're the worst person in the world mm -hmm. to live like that. And we never judge our clients, but they always think they're the worst, that we've never seen anything worse. And we try to explain we have seen a lot of things, really, really um, cluttered homes where there's no place to sit, walk, or, or function. And so we always reassure people, we do work with the average American with cluttered homes, and we're not going to judge you, and we're not going to be mean. <laughs> so when they walk through the door, folks, no need for apologies. Right. They're going to come in and do what they do and do it well. Let me ask you, obviously, what's the first step out there, Mandy, for someone who wants to call your team? The first step would just be to take, um, have the courage to give us a call or check out the website. Um, all of our liberators are extremely nice and they're very fun. Um, one of the things that we like to communicate to everybody is we make organizing fun and we get the job done. They make clean and fun. I mean, they even have parties. Tell me the last thing real quick about the parties. There's, there's a huge difference between cleaning and organizing. Cleaning is a very physical task, but organizing is physical and cerebral. You really have to be able to think through processes and procedures and a Absolutely. home for everything. So it really is a, is a learned trait that is a skill you can develop, but it's so different from cleaning. And so we have organizing parties, and they're so much fun because we get a bunch of people together, men and women, and we give a, an inspirational, informative workshop for 30 minutes and then take lots of questions about their individual situations and needs. Wonderful. Folks, you got everything right there. Their contact information is at the bottom of the screen, their website as well. Remember that is Major Mom. That's Organize, Revitalize, and Breathe. That's right. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know. Until next time, if you know of a business who you feel the whole city should know about, nominate them, we'll send a reporter out. This is Gary Atencio from CNTV, and if you don't know, now you know.